including people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities in research is fair in the way that excluding people is unfair. It's fruitful in that it means we do new work and we learn new things that we wouldn't have otherwise learned. But ultimately the argument that I'm making in my thesis is that the worth of pushing for that next step in inclusive research of having people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities taking part in research as researchers rather than subjects or objects of research isn't justified based on fairness or fruitfulness but through a basic recognition of the existence of these people as fact. And I found a quote from Trilling who was wondering why Wordsworth chose to include people with profound disabilities in his epiphanies. And he concludes, these persons forcibly exist as human beings. Reindeer says people with profound disabilities can be understood as the rule of what it means to be human instead of the exception, and Warhouse points to their belonging in humanity. So excluding them risks a narrower account, not just of disability, but of human experience. Their presence as a part of our society, a part of our humanity, and a part of our construction of meaning is undeniable. Seeking the inclusion of people with intellectual capacities different to our own isn't just a sentimental move. People with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities present significant challenge to belief in human equality. And whilst their inclusion in research yields moral fairness and epistemic fruitfulness, its justification can be found in a recognition of their existence as ontological fact. If we want our theories and our methods, our models, to be complete, we must recognise within them the fundamental belonging of all people, including those people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. <laughs>